Welcome back to an exciting snowy night here in Iowa. We are in the town hall with Republican presidential candidate Nikki Haley. Welcome back, everybody. Governor, uh, there's a number of states that are looking to take former President Trump off the ballot. The Supreme Court is going to try to hear this, possibly decide it. What do you think about that? Should he be taken off the ballot? How do you think the Supreme Court will be receiving that? No, he shouldn't be taken off the ballot. And the Supreme Court needs to rule quickly before other states start to do this. This is one of those, don't open a door if you don't want to see what happens. This is a door we don't need to open. I will defeat President Trump fair and square. I don't need anybody throwing him off the ballot to do it. But this started back with COVID. The idea that you have people telling people what to do, how to think, what to, how to live, all of that, that's wrong. If they can do this to him, they'll do it to someone else. We can't have others saying, I don't think he should be on the ballot. I think Americans can decide on their own whether they want him to be on the ballot or not. All right. Okay. Let's go to David, who is retired and from sales management. He's from Des Moines. And you're deciding, I believe, between... Trump and Haley, is that right? Right. I think I'm going to out myself here right at the beginning uh, by saying I voted for Trump in 2016 and 2020. Um, me too. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the opportunity. Governor Haley, I've heard you say many, many times that you agreed with a lot of Donald Trump's policies. You actually like some of them. Uh, it was all the rest of the stuff that goes along with him that was the issue. Can you name two or three of his policies that you would consider bringing back and re-implementing should you be elected president? Well, I think what we saw with President Trump, and, and I think when I say he was the right president at the right time, he was good at breaking things, right? But now we need somebody to fix them. Because that was the problem. Yes, he, he said that... You know, you look at the fact that he said that he was going to go deal with the border, but he never quite got there. We need to fix it now and make sure that we stop the flow. You know, when you look at what happened with education, he called things out, but we actually need to take it back to the basics and get all of the strings off of education so that we're focusing on our kids. When you look at what's happening, you know, with law enforcement, let's bring law and order back to our country. But I think what he did do was he had a strength when it came to how to deal with countries abroad. That was important. The problem is, again, he didn't follow through with China. He allowed us to get these Chinese police stations. He let there be a Chinese spy base to go off our shores in Cuba. He didn't do anything about the fentanyl flow. So it's like he broke it, but he never finished it. He never fixed it. Now's the time we have to fix things. And that's why we need a new generational leader that's not going to focus on the past, which is what he and Biden both are doing. We need someone who's going to focus on the solutions of the future so that we can start getting things back on track. So, David, what do you think about that answer? Does it, does it dis, you know, persuade you either way? You're on the fence still? Uh, he certainly broke things. And I, and, and I would say there's still a need for things to be broken. For example, today, the uh, president of Mexico was giving a list of demands to, the, to Biden about what we needed to do to get him to play ball with us. It didn't go that way with Trump. It was no, just and you know what we would do on that? We would go to the president of Mexico and say, OK, if that's how you're going to be, then no, you're not getting the $250 million in aid that you're getting right now. The problem, the reason Mexico is doing that, everybody smells blood in the water. Everybody smells weakness. And what I'll tell you, at the UN, I did one thing. I put a book together and I put all 193 countries. The second column was the percentage of times they voted with the U.S. and against the U.S. And the third column was how much foreign aid we gave them. I gave it to President Trump and I said, quit trying to buy friends, quit paying off enemies. We have to start being strategic. Last year, they gave Iraq money. They gave Belarus, who's holding hands with Russia, money. They gave Cuba, who we named a state sponsor of terrorism, money. They gave Zimbabwe, the most anti-American African country there is. We gave China money. How weak do we look? When I'm president, we will no longer give money to countries that hate America. Governor Haley, thank you very much. Uh, this has been very instructive. Some great questions from Iowa voters. Did the governor sway some of you? Some of you? Okay. Uh, we'll see. We have a couple of town halls to come. We'll be following you as you head towards next Monday and the caucuses. Thank you very much. Thank you for watching our town hall with Republican presidential candidate Nikki Haley.
Yeah, it's been great having everyone here. And for those of you who are undecided, if you want to come back, we have two more nights that we are in town here. Uh, we'll be here almost all week, so you're welcome to come back and uh, join us for Ron DeSantis tomorrow night and for former President Donald Trump on Wednesday night. It's exciting that people are uh, making these decisions as we get to close to this, so we look forward to both of those this week. And this is the beginning of the process. Iowa is number one. And I was out and about talking to voters today uh, that are going to caucus, and I said, are you worried about the snow? Are you worried about the cold? And they said, suck it up. It's Iowa. Uh, <laughs> we're going to manage to get there no matter what. So we'll be there, too, uh, bouncing around the state until next month. We sure will. We're doing shows from here all week, and we look forward to join you joining us for those as the voters of America begin to speak, because we talk a lot about the polls, as Governor Haley said, but now people will have their voices heard, and we'll see what they have to say from Iowa. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Thank you, Demore. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.